Buenas, buenas. Welcome to Music Marketing TV. I'm Kevin Ochoa, and today we're going to take a look at a chop vocal like this one. Come and don't you hold it back. back, back, back. And I'm going to show you guys how to make it from being a single little chop like this Back. to making it sound full and, you know, also add unison pitch, which is the unique feature inside Harmer. Because all I'm really doing here is just playing one note at a time. But Harmer has all the special sauce in there to make it a harmonic sound. So without further ado, let's hop into a foul and I'm going to show you every step of the way. So I start off by using a vocal sample, this one. Come, don't you hold it back. Now I made sure I stretch pro and time manipulation already on so it can match the tempo of my track. And then once I had that chop made, I cut it up like so. I brought it over here. And the next step I did was I went into the uh, sample settings right here and I made it unique as a sample. What this does is it'll bring it back into the session right here as its own little sample that's separate back. from the actual uh, vocal phrase that we heard earlier. Now this is gonna be routed to the same exact mixer track and whatnot, um, but that doesn't really matter for now because we're gonna load up a farmer and in here, I'm gonna go into a preset section and I'm gonna go into resynthesis and then harmony, okay? What you'll see here is that there's a demo vocal on here. There are quite a lot of subtractive synthesizers often bragging about being virtual analog. And if you turn off the unison, you hear just the one voice. There are quite a lot of subtractive synthesizers. So this patch already has a bit of a unison modulation going on, which I'll show you in a second, which is how we get. There are quite a lot of subtractive synthesizers. That sound. Now, right now it doesn't sound harmonic because it's just a guy talking, but if we load up our sample in here, I can drag and drop it straight into Harmer, and boom, it's right there. And if I play back my key, you hear the harmonies already. If I turn off the unison again, back, back. you hear the voice by itself. But now, what if I want to match the actual key that I have? Back. You notice that when I play E, back. even though this is supposed to be a, a vocal part in E, back. it's not playing back in E. Well, I can come back to my adjustment settings in FL or miscellaneous functions, and I can right click on the correct key. And now when I go back to Harmer, back. this will play back as is its intended. Now, from here, I can go to my envelope, back, back. move from the pitch index mapping to just regular volume envelope. Back. Back. And you notice that there's a part of the, of the pitch that goes down, and I don't want that in there. Now, the cool thing about Harmer is that you can drag and drop the files into the articulator section, which includes envelopes, uh, LFOs and whatnot, and you can use the amplitude of a vocal sample, or any sample for that matter, and use it to manipulate the audio. So now here I can kind of tell that the last little hump right here, that's when it changes pitch. I can kind of tell. So I can use my uh, step editing tool, and right click and drag to erase all these nodes up until right about right there. Let's zoom in a bit. I'll make one last node. Oh, I overdid it a little bit. Um, and there, I'm gonna make sure that my note ends at zero. And now where I hit that note again. It, it has that um, cut off early, right? If I make this longer, back, 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 back. you will hear that little pitch envelope again. That's not what we want. Back, back. 
right around right here should be the sweet spot. There you go. Now, there's warbling going on, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter. Now, to hear what the unison or to be able to edit what the unison is doing in this patch, remember when I put it to three, we get the harmonic sound, right? Now, to be able to actually edit it, I'm going to go to the pitch editor and unison index mapping. In this patch, it's already preloaded, so it's kind of easy to see. Um, by the way, whenever you want to edit something or want to see what other things you've edited, there's a little um, arrow to anything that has modulation inside Harmer. So that's also a nice little trick uh, tip. Now, if I go back to unison index mapping, you see I have control over the three different voices here. If I were to move these here, and click on the note again. It's just playing one note at a time. But as soon as I move these, you hear that I'm changing some of the unison voices. Now, if I were to stack four of them up, I can also do that. So I can make one right here, one underneath on the third, third below, then one um, at zero, and one at the fourth, and then one at the seventh. So that's a four stack chord. So we're able to manipulate this. Another cool trick here is if I use the pitch thickness, I can change the variation on each hit. And the more I push it up, the more varied the voices are going to be. If I push it all the way up, it will become out of key eventually. Right? Let's push it back down to a little bit right there. There we go. And we can also change the phases of these, right? So we can give some variation. Not only that, but I can come back here and then I can do random mapping. And this would give you random voices. Hold on. <laughs> so that's pretty funny. Um, but the cool thing about this is we can tell this even further. So let me go right around right here. There you go. So now instead of changing the whole note, we can change, if I press Alt, I can change the sense. So I can I can give it a certain amount of sense to be off. Likewise, the same over here. And we'll just do two and five and then two on the other side. All right, so now every time I hit the stab, there's a slight variation on there. So it's not as repetitive as you would on a regular sampler. And I absolutely love this about Harmer. So the other thing I did for my patch, if you, if I go back to it for a second, of course I have a reverb and delay, which I had originally on the patch, but I opted out for putting it externally, but with the internal delay and reverb and compression, it sounds like this. It's pretty nice. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and copy those settings over. So let me show you how to do that. Now, what I did was I changed the compression to burning. I push up the high and in the mids a little bit. Sorry. Okay. And the other thing I wanted to do was add some delay. Now, the delay here on and on the beginning. It's not really tempo mapped properly. It's on third, so let's make it to second. And then we can do change the stereo offset to make it a little bit less. And then I can also add a filter, make the feedback a lot longer, and also push the volume higher. Okay. There you go. And I think I did I turn on the reverb already. Okay. 
Now the reverb, you can mess around with it a bit to see what you would like for your settings. Somewhere right there, I think it's pretty similar. Let's check back to the original patch I had. Now, I think the other thing I did here was, yeah, I made a loop. So this way, the one shot ends at zero. So let me show you this again. I'm gonna go back to the envelope, volume, and go all the way to the front, go to the very first node, right click on it, and select uh, loop start, and then over here, loop end. This way I can get the sound to be even more choppy. Without this, it will actually play the whole thing. With it, it will like end quicker. So that way I can actually make use of the delay as well and have it be a little bit more rhythmic. So once I have this kind of ready, I can start making chops with it. So let me go to my piano roll. I'm gonna press F4 to make a new pattern and call this new pattern. Okay, right click, go to the piano roll. And now here I can play with any of, of the notes that I want. In this example, I decided to stay on the key, but you could, you know, make something completely different. And the cool thing about Harmer is that you can also do pitch manipulation on here because it's a native FL plugin. So watch, I'm gonna make some. I'm gonna swap this out for um, the new pattern right here. Let me mute the original vocal patch I had here for a second, and we can give it a shot to see what it sounds like. Hey, not bad. That's uh, pretty fun. Uh, let's go back. I could even, um, let's say, let me just save the project one last time before I do this. And press save. And I'm gonna override the other patch that I have in the track so we can just hear what it would sound like in the whole uh, another track. I'm gonna press save as, and put it right there. And press control N again to make a new, uh, new project version. And there we go, it's replaced. Now we can hear with the track, um, our patch that we just made together that has the four chords, right? The four notes, not just the three. Come and don't you hold it back. There we go. <laughs> that was pretty nice. I I really like that. I think it's a a cool, nice patch. By the way, um, the other way you can tell if something's 
kind of going out of key is using the spectrum here into harmony. If I go to octave view, it's really obvious when at this point here, the vocal changes notes. Whereas over here, there's warbling in there, but it's just trying to stay on the same uh, key right over here. She changes the note completely. So if, as long as you keep the loop up to right here, it sounds pretty decent. Um, again, I think there's a lot of uh, other things to show with Harmer, but I wanted to keep this tutorial nice and brief. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys give us a like, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, and if you have any comments or questions, leave in the comment section down below. And yeah, make sure you stay up to date with all our content here at Music Marketing TV. I'm Kevin Ochoa, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Come and don't you hold it back.